Get in slowly to avoid cold shock. Wear a swim cap, wetsuit and booties. Get out before getting too cold. Then warm up fast. This is Water Safety Ireland. For advice, visit watersafety.ie. Better safe than sorry. Supported by the Government of Ireland. Football on Off The Ball With Sky Catch the biggest live Premier League games Every weekend on Sky Sports You're welcome back We are turning our attention to the Premier League Because it was a cracker of a game yesterday Between Tottenham Hotspur and Liverpool But there has also been developments today On the Covid front And to that end we've got Miguel Delaney Chief football writer with the London Independent with us Good evening to you Miguel Hi Alan. Uh, we'll start with that COVID news. Obviously, news today about UK potentially going into some version of a lockdown between now and the end of the year. The Premier League, however, it seems have voted to power on. Uh, I guess this idea of a circuit breaker didn't really move the needle for enough clubs. They didn't really see the benefits in it. At least I assume that's the reasoning for this. Well, it didn't even go to a vote um, right. in the end. I think they, the majority of the clubs decided to crack on, as it were. Uh, it's interesting, even in the discussions, there was apparently a little bit, not necessarily a split, but maybe kind of just two sides of the two sides of the argument put forward. And um, from what I'm told, the clubs who have recently had outbreaks and had games postponed, they are actually more in favour of going without a circuit breaker, whereas those who weren't were. Uh, so I suppose that comes down to all sorts of issues about kind of um, rest time and all that. But um, I think there's also the fact that you know, e- e- even by virtue of, the, of that, that reasoning there, that clubs are coming out of these outbreaks and uh, are getting back to normal, so to speak, there is actually a general confidence that... Um, and, and to be fair, this, this was also the case last Thursday from within the Premier League, if not necessarily from some clubs, but there is a confidence that the situa- situation will kind of get back to normal now and that these specific outbreaks were because of the time of year as well as the fact that uh, Omicron, obviously just, you know, it skyrocketed in the UK. Uh, but also, for, for the first few days of that, the Premier League clubs were still operating under their, their normal measures, which is, you know, basically open training grounds, players interacting as normal. And so since Monday, they've had um, project restart measures, essentially. And there was always confidence that was eventually going to bring the situation back under the control. OK, there's no guarantees that games will not be called off over the next week, but I, I, I think well, um, from what I'm told, the, the, there's a confidence in the game that it will get more, it'll get closer to normal, and it should be a full schedule, really. Right. So we're a week into the project restart measures, and I suppose week two of that, you'll, you'll fully start to see those results. Just like, did they consider what a circuit breaker would involve and, and the benefits of it? Because in fairness, Miguel, you could probably make a case that a circuit breaker would only solve so much anyway and that maybe getting back up to speed, having to do maybe even a little pre-season to get things back up and running mm. or having to forego a pre-season maybe is more to the point and all the, the, the fitness worries and injuries that might come as a result of that. In fairness, did they give a valid case against stopping play for a while? Yeah, well, t- today was more about whether they actually um, just postpone one round of fixtures and that was only just to give clubs a little bit of breathing space because obviously... Mm. So certain clubs that haven't had uh, postponements, they could be forced to lean on the same players in, t- in, t- in too short a spell of time. In fact, there's probably a bigger discussion to be had almost on the fact that it's 2021 and players are still playing games with only kind of like a, t- a two-day break, which which I think is generally advised against in the game now. But the main discussion on the circuit breaker itself came last Thursday. And w- like one of the reasons it wasn't adapted at all, uh, more or less was ba- was basically because when it came right down to it, no one really advocating it or advoc- advocating for it could actually make a solid argument as to how a circuit breaker actually benefit and what and why that was superior to just trying to play games as and when they came up. Because as you, as you alluded to there, um, there was no guarantee at that point the situation would improve or where, when they came back there wasn't just another, another outbreak and get, and so it could have led to a situation where two teams that could have played and were, were, were safe to play, would have needlessly had a game postponed, only adding to the fixture schedule. Now, of course, I suppose part of this, you're getting into bigger arguments about how the, the potluck of whether you've had an outbreak or not, or whether you can weather or not, whether you can weather a few cases or not, is influencing the season. But ultimately, we are in a, a global pandemic. There's no, there's no kind of perfect um, you know, level platform at the moment. There's always going to... The situation they have to adapt around. And to be fair... 
I actually think for, for all criticism of the Premier League in, in some things and justified criticism in some cases, this has actually been one thing they've been generally quite sensible about and have reacted well. And I, I think even the fact the situation is beginning to come under more control with the adaptation of the, the emergency protocols uh, points to that. Is, is there a sense as well that the, the kind of the vaccination rate plays into this a little bit that obviously your required period of isolation is going to be a lot longer if you're unvaccinated as opposed to if you are vaccinated and maybe the clubs can say well listen it's uh, up to the decision of each player and if the decision of each player essentially is to the detriment of their team then that's sort of on you and and I know today Miguel the figures come out that 77% of its players have been double jabbed against against COVID so that's up from 68% I think in October mm. so like taking those two things into account here is, is, is it at least going in the right direction or do the Premier League still have a hell of a lot of work to do to actually, uh, to maybe not the Premier League, but is there is there still a big battle to be won on the vaccination front with a lot of English yeah. with footballers playing in the English league? There's still an issue there, and I think some of, some of those figures are slightly complicated with the fact that there's about four or five clubs that have 100% vaccination records mm. or close to 100%, and there's some that don't. And obviously, the 100% is going to kind of bring the figures up. Um, the other side of those stats today, as encouraging as the the progress was, 16% from my reading of the figures, aren't jabbed at all. And from talking to people in football today, and including medical staff at some clubs, uh, they, they, they're still reasserting that some players are absolutely refusing to budge. They just won't get the vaccine. And this, of course, is creating... It's almost... It's a whole separate debate to the postponements, even though it influences it. So, like, one of the situations it's thrown, it's thrown up is that if you are unvaccinated and you come into close contact with someone who has COVID... In the UK, you have to isolate for 10 days. That's not the case for someone who's vaccinated. So uh, so this, given their unvaccinated players at clubs, this is a situation that has naturally arisen. Um, and in fact, Martin Ziegler of the Times, I think, reported that at least one game has been called off because of this. Um, so, so, I mean, that, that, that creates a very real and immediate effect of this. Uh, and then there's kind of, I suppose the bigger discussion about how the Premier League tackles, especially given the figures that did the rounds this weekend, about how poorly it, it performs as regards vaccinations in comparison to other major leagues. Mm. And there, there is an issue. Um, I, I think it's also why Jurgen Klopp, and to be fair, actually Bruno Lage, the, uh, the Wolves manager as well, have really stood out on this because they've been such strong moral voices and cut through football's sense of exceptionalism to kind of point to real-world issues. Um, like, like in, in some of the response to this, I mean, there's always an element, I suppose, that like players are ultimately very valued assets for clubs, and to a degree, they don't want to aggravate uh, some players. I think that that perhaps explains an element of when managers da- dance around all this. But like, I must say, even from, from the perspective of a myself, a, a human being participating in society, I, fi- I, I find it very frustrating, and it feels like the, the whole. Premier, Premier League vaccination thing. it's been danced around by, by two main reasons confidentiality um, and uh, personal choice but that personal choice feels I mean first of all it's not really it's not truly a personal choice given it's actually a social choice because it involves interaction with society and has effect on other people but also even if it is personal choice you can still challenge the reasons for that personal choice and in the specific case in Premier League or sorry in with from, from what we're told from the testimony of so many sources, a real issue in the Premier League is that a lot of players aren't getting vaccines because of what are frankly delusional theories going around the division, going around dressing rooms. Two of the most commonly repeated are, one, cardiac issues. So you hear Christian Eriksen's name brought up a lot by players. That's despite the fact that Inter confirmed he wasn't vaccinated. And last Monday, in an excellent column for the Irish Times, uh, Ken Early cited that study, which, uh, which, or sorry, the doctor who did that that, that study in Germany, which um, illustrated that 2021 has actually had fewer cardiac issues in football than the pre-COVID year of 2018. So that's, that's a, I mean, that's one theory that explains his personal choice already demolished. The second one, which is even more bizarre, is lots of players think, or have been told, or like, this is something swirling around, that taking the vaccine affects your virility. Uh, which is obviously like, <laughs> it's just pure conspiratorial nonsense. Mm. Uh, and that is a challenge for the Premier League. It's something they're trying to tackle. And I think, well, I, mean, I suppose depending how the situation goes, if, if Omicron, say, does calm down in a month, it, it, this again will be something that, that dissipates. 
But I'd say if, if it does happen again, we have we have another variant that kind of rampages through the UK and causes problems for the Premier League. It will come up again and will, and will be an ongoing issue. For sure, just to, uh, to put some meat in the bones of the exact figures there, because it is stark, 77% of Premier League footballers vaccinated. Serie A, the vaccine uptake is, is 98%, Bundesliga 92%, and La Liga 92%. So there's a there's a quite a, a disparity there, and, and maybe there's a, a number of theories that, that people could put forward to actually suggest why that is. But we do want to just get into the, to the football, especially from yesterday, Miguel. Just to tell you that football and OTB is brought to you by Sky. Christmas is for football. Watch live Premier League, Women's Super League, EFL, and more on Sky and I did just want to make time for yesterday in particular uh, Liverpool against Tottenham finished 2 all. VAR back in the headlines I mean not that it was never in the headlines last week given the amount of penalties that were given today or this weekend the weekend just gone it seems at the bar for VAR to actually get involved or to overrule the referee's decision has just got to an unreachable level where VAR deserted the referees in a couple of big moments it led to a couple of incorrect decisions in the Liverpool game I think it's fair to say but a pretty vitriolic reaction from Jurgen Klopp, which quite possibly doesn't actually help things in the long run and perhaps maybe misses the point of how Paul Tierney was hung out to dry a little bit by the, the lack of a VAR who was who was doing him a solid yesterday. Yeah, I, felt, I must say I felt a lot of sympathy for um, for Tierney uh, under Klopp's. And uh, this is one thing, I mean, for, for all I would praise Klopp for you know how he comports himself when it comes to real-world issues, he can occasionally be quite, be quite a sour loser. And mm. I think that was illustrated... In uh, after yesterday's game, um, like it was just it was. I have to say, like, some of, some of this he really frustrates me because I, I remember fifteen years ago, just kind of almost, especially because I'm half Spanish. Um, you'd see the Spanish press and particularly the, the the four major newspapers that cover the clubs: two for Madrid, Aston Marca, and two for Barcelona, Mundo Deportivo, and Sport. And they'd just be obsessed with refereeing decisions. All everything was all about. Refereeing refereeing decisions and it feels like all right, England is there now because we're just constantly talking about refereeing decisions all the time and okay yes you can take a VAR was supposed to improve this ultimately VAR is still just a tool that has made that is imp- this is objective fact it has improved decision making it has made it more correct but it's never going to be it's still operated by humans it's, so it's not going to be 100% correct there's still going to be flaws there there's still going to be times where the interpretation is just different and I think that's what happened and I, I, I think that almost goes with the wayside but it's still ultimately going to be a case of with refereeing decisions because it, it, it's subjective it's humans involved um, it's win some lose some and it was interesting actually just I was watching some of the response on social media yesterday and saw in, in, in <laughs> as a response to a lot of the Liverpool complaints a lot of Spurs fans still going on about the penalty in the first minute of the 2019 Champions League <laughs> final which kind of sums up the point point. and yeah people might get frustrated by that but um it is also, you just feel such a frustration after a game like that yesterday. It was so good. For me, one of the games of the season. Uh, and we're talking about referees. More, I mean, I think a bigger issue for Klopp yesterday should have been the fact that uh, whatever happened with the scene, now, fair enough, Van Dijk was out and the midfield was quite callow. But Spurs won a tactical battle yesterday and created so many chances. Um, Klopp should be more fixated than that, I think. I agree with you on the fixation on referees. It does feel that there were maybe more legitimate complaints about the officiating yesterday, even if you remove the red-tinted spectacles, for example, that would have been coming from from Jurgen Klopp. There, there did seem to be a feeling, Miguel, yesterday that it was like, you just sorted out yourselves, we're just going to trust the referee in this. And yes, you're right, the VAR is ultimately decided by a human and a human is involved in it. But like they did feel deserted yesterday a little bit. Like what 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 has happened here? What has changed over the course of the last few months? Where you know the, the screen, for example, hasn't been made available as as it once was. Unless I'm completely misremembering the early parts of this season or in the end of last season. Yeah, well, I, well, I mean, suppose one, one thing about it is that the constant commotion about referees and VAR, it does mean that no no single decision ever takes place in a vacuum. Mm. It's always it's always part of a continuous continuum. Where even though it shouldn't be the case, but it's it's inevitably going to be the case. One informs the other, and equally, I just think the Kane decision was just a bad decision. That's all it comes. To. Sometimes that happens. Okay, and yes, you can. It's fair enough for Klopp to be frustrated with that, I, but it still, I don't think, justifies Klopp's specific reaction. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it, it was it was just a bad decision, and and that that <laughs> that will still happen. <laughs> and of course, it's brought a big debate, I suppose, over the England captain not getting punished, but the Scottish captain getting punished. Uh, I wouldn't quite buy into that so much. Uh, I actually I think that's, that's possibly more down. Kane's quite um, uh, how to put this. 
he can be an influential figure on the pitch with a lot, especially with, ref, I mean, with referees, and even subconsciously that can have an effect. I mean, I'd uh, I'd ask you, would you certainly send Harry Kane off when you know you're? Yeah, and I, you, yeah, you would. You you do a. I, 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 I thought it was a red. Yeah, yeah. straight. I have to say. Not, um, not even when your hero, that the hero of your country, is is staring down at you. As if you were an English referee, the man you probably supported <laughs> during uh, major tournaments. I, I, that that's an interesting one actually. Because st- there was a lot of this yesterday. Actually, I saw about how well Kane is England's darling. Um, so no one is that really the case. He mostly got he got absolutely pilloried for his behaviour <laughs> in the summer. Um, <laughs> like, he was suddenly kind of derided in the way he hadn't been before. So. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a fair point. Listen, Miguel, good stuff this evening. Thanks a million for being with us. Cheers, Al. thank you. Cheers. Miguel Delaney, Chief Football Writer with the London Independent there with us on the line. Football here on Off the Ball is brought to you by Sky. Christmas is for football. Watch live Premier League, Women's Super League, EFL and more on Sky. We'll take a quick break. Football on Off the Ball. With Sky. Catch the biggest live Premier League games every weekend on Sky Sports. My whole family life was destroyed. My life was destroyed. I'm Frank Rainey, host of a new and exclusive news talk podcast, Inside the Crime, which tells the story of the Christmas morning murders of Sharon Whelan and her 